Caching in JavaScript application is very useful and it's important for several reasons. And in this lesson, I'm going to explain to you what is caching and how to use it in a Next.js 13 application. The first reason why you would use the cache, it would be for performance reasons. Of course, when you use the cache, you save the data locally and it improves the performance because you don't have to call all the time the API to refresh the data. The problem is that probably the data would have changed in the database and probably your cache is overwriting the regeneration when you call your API. We're going to see in this lesson how to avoid this. The second reason would be about the bandwidth. You don't want to call your API all the time because it costs you money and every time you are going to request your API, it's going to launch a process which could be long or not, depending on the amount of requests your API is receiving at the time you do your call. The third reason would be a faster user experience. When you get data that is cached, actually your application is served quicker than it is not. The fourth reason, of course, we already talked about it. We have a reduce load uh, server uh, implication into the process. So offload server resources are reducing the cost of the server. And the last reason, of course, it's because you would like to have, for instance, an offline access to your application. So if you want to let your user to access to the application offline, you would use the cache. All right, back in my application, I got two pages. I got the page app and the page posts. And both of them are uh, server side rendered, so it's server component. And here we've got a function that is rendering, and it's exactly the same function in here. I could have externalized this function, but here I just copy paste it. That is rendering a random number, which is math, floor, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. This example you see it in a lot of lessons uh, on YouTube, and I think this is the best to explain how cache is working. Okay. So uh, both of those uh, functions that we get in here are calling the function here random three digit number. So let's come back in here and we see that we've got on the home page a number 184 and we've got a link to post pages. So I'm going to click on link to post pages and suddenly I arrive on the post page with a new number which is 564. Okay, if I come back to the home page and you, we got to remember the number here. If I come back to the home page, suddenly I got 184. But there's a problem, right? Because here I'm supposed to call random digit number and every time I'm going to call this function, I'm going to have a random number, right? And here I don't got a random number. So what's happening in here is that we are currently using the cache. So on server component, by default, the data that we've got is cached. So this is why probably if you are using the um, server components, you would have some cases where the data is not regenerated. Don't worry, it's totally normal. We are going to show you later how to regenerate the data directly inside your server component. Okay, so I'm going to come back to uh, the post uh, uh, page and here I refreshed it and we got 635. And if we uh, switch between home and, and post, we see that we have data that has been cached. Okay, if I come back to the post page and uh, let's say that in here I would like to transform this post page into a client component, does it work the same? So I'm going to go on the top, I'm going to type use client in here, okay, and there we go. And with this use client, I'm going to get back and down there I put some um, some Tailwind CSS to show you the difference. So here we got the client component, we got 784. So post page is now a client component and we got 784. If I come back home, I got a server component with 443. And if I switch, suddenly the client component got a new number. And if I come back home, I still got 444. And if I come back here, we see that every time I switch, the client component doesn't cache by default. So this is the first lesson. The client component doesn't cache by default and the server side rendered component is caching by default. So as a client component, the function random three digit number will be called 
all the time are rendered. However, on the server side, it's keeping its first value until the moment I regenerate the page. But if I don't regenerate the page, I stay at the number that I had before at first. Let's make now the demonstration with an endpoint inside our API. Here we've got an uh, API random endpoint of a get method with the next response returning to us an object random with exactly the same, um, uh, the same function that we used inside our server-side component. In my application, I created two new pages for the client and for the server demonstration. So we are right now on server-side rendering and I got a call to get random number, the function that is going to call my API random. And if I come back in here, we see that I got 877. And if I update, the number stays the same. By default on server-side, the cache here is no store. We see that by default, the cache is going to be applied on top of every call. So you can call as much time as you want, as many times as you want. It will stay on the first uh, results that it got. So if you want to avoid this, you can pass here cache no store. And every time that I'm going to call my server-side rendered page, we see here that the number will change. By default, here it's going to be force cache for SSR, which means that it's going to stay on the first value that it got, and it's going to keep uh, the cache as long as we manually recall uh, the API to get a new number. Let's do exactly the same with our page client side rendered. So it's exactly the same as the SSR page, all right? And here we are going to call our um, API. We're gonna have the uh, random number that is coming back. And here I'm going to go to the endpoint. And basically here I have the number displayed. So we see that every time that I call, I got a new number. We are on the client side. Client side doesn't cache by default, okay? By default, actually, it has the cache no store. And with cache no store, actually, we never cache the data. So every time the component is going to refresh the data. Let's say that you want to do the opposite. You are going to use cache force cache, okay? So I'm gonna come back here, I got 815. And every time I'm going to update my page, I'm going to have 815. So on the client side, you can cache by using force cache and by default, it's no store. And on the server side, it's the opposite. By default, it's false cache, and here it's no store. Okay, let's come back to this server side page that we created before. And we've got this function get random number that is called, and we got a random number. For some reason, we would like to update this number x amount of time per day, because we don't want that all the time we will keep the same cache data. Okay, and we probably want to stay on server-side rendering in here because we got some SEO uh, optimization or SEO configuration on this page and we would like to keep it on the server-side. So how can I do if I come back here to remove this number and update this number? And by extension here we talk about the number but actually I'm talking more about refreshing the data on a product. Let's give an example. Let's say that this page is a product that you cached, but probably the price of the product will change every hour, and you would like to actually update the cache. How can you do? You would like to turn this into a client component by default, but you can keep it actually as a server-side rendered component. And what you can do here is to use next, and you can use revalidate. And revalidate here, it's a parameter that you pass to say, hey, I want to keep this page on server-side rendering, and I would like to keep the cache, so keep the data for a certain amount of time, and let's say that here it will be five seconds. Every five seconds, I would like to revalidate the data. I would like to refresh the number. So here, we're gonna have one number. It's going to stay five seconds, and after five seconds, it's going to refresh, call again, 
Okay, we got a number here, which is 267, and I update, I update, I update, and suddenly the number change, I update, I update, I update, 917, 950. Every five seconds, the cache will be updated because I pass the next revalidate that I got here. I would need to pass next revalidate to update the data x seconds. Otherwise, it would keep always the data that has been cached. So we use next revalidate when we want to say to the application, use the cache. However, every x seconds, update the cache. 